The human body is an amazing creation of nature, the study of which has never ceased to amaze everyone since the beginning of mankind. The beauty of the world around and the innumerable mysteries of the universe are understood, felt and enjoyed by this very instrument of wonder. The five sense organs that account to much of our interactions with our surroundings are so sophisticated that each one of them deserves a better understanding. We now study the human ear. To decode the whole complicated behavior, we have broken down the ear into three broad parts, namely the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear Physiology The outer ear consists of two parts the ear lobe or pinna and the auditory canal. The cartilaginous visible outer portion of the ear is called the ear lobe or the pinna. The cartilage gives the outer ear its typical flexibility. It helps us to gather sound and transports the sound to the inner parts of the ear. The outer ear continues down into the auditory canal. The dead end of the auditory canal is covered by the tympanic membrane which marks the beginning of the middle ear. The middle ear Physiology The middle ear consists of the tympanum and a group of three very small bones namely the malleus, the incus and the stapes. Functions of the middle ear The tympanic membrane vibrates with sound waves. The malleus which is in contact with the tympanum receives these vibrations. The movement in turn rotates the neighboring bone incus. The incus is attached to the stapes that receives the vibratory movement and transfers it to the oval window or the fenestra ovalis. An interesting fact to notice that due to the physical resemblances, the malleus is named as the hammer, the incus is called the anvil and the stapes is called the stirrup. Remember these day-to-day -day objects and you will remember the middle ear. The middle ear is connected to the throat region through a tubular passage called Eustachian Canal. This keeps the air pressure on either sides of the eardrum equal. The inner ear Physiology The inner ear consists of membranous labyrinth surrounded by the bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth consists of the vestibule, the semicircular canals and the cochlea. The vestibule, a chamber in the center of the bony labyrinth which communicates with both the cochlea and the semicircular canals. The oval and the round windows are both located in the lateral wall of the vestibule. The semicircular canals, the semicircular canals contain the semicircular ducts which have arisen from the utricle of the vestibular labyrinth. The cochlea. Cochlea forms a spiral which contains the cochlear nerve. Functions of the inner ear. The base plate of the stapes bone from the middle ear fits into the oval window of the bony labyrinth and sends pressure waves into the inner fluids.
These pressure waves reach the sound receptor cells present in the organ of cortai. All these receptor cells are connected to form the auditory nerve which carries the sound impulse to the auditory center of the cerebrum creating the recognition of sound. The pressure thus generated in the oval window reaches the end of the labyrinth and is relieved at the round window. Thus, the ears are not just auditory sense organs of the body, but have much to do with the overall balance and physical orientation of the body. So, next time when you get down from the merry-go-round and feel dizzy or off balance, you know whom to blame. Your ears.